great day to play, everybody! Welcome on in to the channel, yeah! Whether it's your first time here or you are rejoining us, thank you so much for being here with us today. You are loved, you are appreciated, you are always welcome here in this channel, and you are enough. Now, jumping back into the BU, today we're going to be doing run. And I like this stuff has just been so cool and it's just been on my mind so much. Um really going and thinking about it. And I've been like I, I always read all the comments, but like if there's ever like when I start reading things and then like I see something that like could even remotely give me like spoilers, I just like move away. And for the most part, like thank you guys so much because it doesn't seem like m the vast majority of you have given me anything. But um like obviously my whole point of going through this journey is I want to do it like you guys would have had to do it back in the day where like you don't have help. You don't have, you know, people that explain the theories and things like that. You guys had to come up with them on your own originally. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Like, I don't know where we're going. I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if I'm wrong and I don't care. Um, I just want to be able to kind of go through the journey with all of you. And I really, really appreciate you guys being on this journey with me. Um, but some thoughts back because I've watched some of the other videos over and over again. I try to watch them at least a couple of times again before going into the next video because there's a lot of things that tied in from video one from I need you to the prologue. And then I'm sure that that's going to continue now. So some of the things like there's clearly some like I know that some of the people in the comments had said like, well, you know, it's not all about symbolism. There's a lot of literal things going here. And like, yeah, that's that's obviously true. But I don't feel like we need like I think everybody sees the literal things going on. Right. And some of those literal things, I think each and every one of them, it almost seems like has some kind of, you know, disorder going on in some kind of way not necessarily i think disorder is a bad bad word but clearly like jimin has like some major depression issues going on right theoretically I, we don't know if he actually drowned himself in the bathroom if he was attempting to we don't know um v technically like definitely has some issues and whether it's rebellion whether it's rage whether whatever it is he's got some issues there you know jk clearly has self-esteem issues like he clearly does not he does not think much of himself he probably always feels like the world is beating up on him both in a physical sense and a literal sense um uh, J-Hope obviously also has some issues. We saw a bunch of those medications. We, I don't know what the medications are for, but obviously there's issues there. You know, Jin is really the only person that's kind of like the outside looking in, obviously. And I still believe to this day that this story is being told through Jin's eyes. So it makes sense that we're seeing a lot of like inner loping, especially with like the flower, with the six sides that I believe that like they all intertwine with him. And then Ratman like doesn't have too much, but Ratman almost seems like both obviously they're playing characters of themselves right but like both in real life and on here ratmon seems to be one of the older figures in in jin's representation um and so like well while jk i feel still feels like the youngest like the youngest brother and who's always kind of like you know being overshadowed and stuff like that so th there's just a lot of really interesting thing and then you have Suga who also like is very volatile, right? Much like fire is because he represents fire. He's very, very volatile. Uh, and and um, so each one of them has kind of their own things. And I think we're seeing each and every one of their, act their stories as well. So I understand there's a literal portion of this, but everybody that watches for the most part will understand the literal portion. And because of how long these videos already get, I'm not going to focus a lot on the literal. I'm going to focus on I, what, I, what I believe the, that they're trying to tell here. And so I also, with the representation of water, with time, going back and like one of the things that I didn't pick up on before was they're constantly in places where there's trains, right? Whether they're like subway tiles, whether they're literally on the train tracks or like on the trains themselves, um, which I think also adds into the element of time, you know, keeping the trains running on time, um, you know, and trains are very linear on their path. Like they can't diverge from that path. They could go in one direction or the other direction. That's it, like forward or backwards, much like time. And so it's very, very interesting here as we continue that like I like to refresh myself of what's going on so that we know what we're expecting for the next one. Um, one of the things that I also picked up on though that I wanted to discuss before we get in, and I know they're like, well, like we're not even getting in a run yet. I know because it's all intertwined. Um, 
Jin, in, in a previous video, Jin looks through the window, and it was almost like a hope thing, but he also was dressed all in, in like, white, and the room was very, very white. And with their, with their attitudes, uh, and I only thought about it because, like, we bought, we bought an old copy of Peter Pan that my wife and I, like, my wife and I used to do, it's harder with a kid now, but, like, we used to sit in bed at night, and we'd read books like I would read them out loud and then we would just sit there and we'd enjoy them and like we've read like Dante's Inferno that way we read Peter Pan that way like so we'd pick up these older books and we'd sit there and read them in bed and I saw it uh it, it sits underneath my nightstand with a couple of my other books and I was thinking that like they also like there's this whole thing that they almost kind of seem like lost boys I don't know if that makes sense but like just with like kind of like when they go backwards that it's almost like this freeing moment and then like you know wendy who like finally becomes like the adult motherly figure i there's like a point in the movie where she's like staring out the window and then like at that point like Jin staring out the window in white looking up i, I don't I, I don't know if that's if that's what's also happening here like if there's that aspect of it because of how like carefree that they seem when they're all together and then also it makes sense because the whole thing with peter pan right is it's like it's the denial of youth or the, the not the denial of youth, the denial of adulthood, right? Like it's, it, they're trying to escape from becoming adults and like that youth is what drives them, right? You can fly, you can fly, you can fly. Like, well, you can't do that if you don't believe. And so like, I think that that's all kind of part of this here, because like I said, I think that the entire thing is kind of like a coming of age tale. And while all these separate stories may have also happened, I think in Jin's mind, they represent different pieces of the puzzle to him. And I know we have a long way to go, clearly, and this could change, but there's also, these videos are also very long and have a lot of things in them. So I think that somehow like that's kind of connected and it kind of fits the narrative. Like it would make sense to have like a Peter Pan type narrative in here if the things that I've thought in the past were true, which I don't know if they are, but that's what I have. So uh, let's get into this without further ado. Also, oh, one more thing. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I get a lot of comments now because like, obviously I think people have been a little spoiled because like I do get quite a few videos that Lucas does get to do, but we only get like one day a week that we get to record videos together. People are like, well, where's Lucas in this video? Where's Lucas? Guys, he works a regular job and like, we like the goal of the channel to be honest in the long like the goal of this channel will be to be able to get lucas on here but the first thing is like i'm not even to a point where i can still afford to do content full time and be able to be here with you guys so like that's the first thing like once i can get to that point then all the extra resources will go to lucas so that we can get lucas to also quit his job and then he can do this and then you'll basically get full-time content from both of us but we need your help and we need your support to do that one of the easiest ways that you could do that right now would be through patreon um and obviously a lot of this is joint ventures like lucas is a business partner of mine as well as a friend and so you know you guys supporting me also supports him and i'm hoping that one day hopefully not too in the distant future we'll be able to get him here full time and be able to have him quit his job so if you want to support make sure you go to patreon make sure you're sharing this with people make sure that you're you know telling others about it i mean all of you like there's this wide wide network of amazing people that we've built in this community and um if you want to see more of lucas that's how we do it so anyway let's do this run Turn this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Okay. Let's let's stop there already. Um they do such like I try so hard to catch all the little nuances in here because there's so many of them. So, I think that it was B that fell backwards into the water and it made a splash and then RM also 
makes a splash with presumably ice and then also takes the sucker out of his mouth, which in the previous videos, we saw him once with that. But again, he, like he's the one who's working, right? Like he was the one pumping gas. He was the one that has is the older one. And the sucker, I think, is kind of like a representation of youth. And so if V's falling in, if we're following, which this doesn't, the timeline goes in and out. But if we're following from epilogue, uh, uh, V just jumped, right? Which I think is his final metamorphosis. He's becoming a butterfly. He has to learn to expect, accept his actions. And he's accepting adulthood. Hood, remember? The adult hood. I think the hood is an actual representation. Adult hood. Um, he jumps. So if this actually kind of follows that from where we left that, he falls into the water. Water, obviously here, a lot of time representation um, and also kind of nothingness. And then RM takes his sucker out of his mouth, youth, and also pushes it in. So I think that these two, I think RM and V are at their furthest point into adulthood versus all the other members so far. Anyway, <laughs> these videos are always so long. And I have my, my stuff for notes because... God knows I need it. Trains again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I promise I'm not gonna stop every 10 seconds. I pro I promise. <laughs> I can't keep that promise. Um. So he's at the train yard. Train represents time, and then he opens a door, and now they're in a different time. Just throwing it out there. I, I don't know. I'm probably so off, but like I just, it fits, right? <laughs> I feel like I can make it work. All right. <laughs> Oh my god, there's so much! Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Uh, first notes. Okay. And it's so hard to pay attention to it all. Um. Okay. Let's go back to right when he opens the door. Okay. This, I saw soul... And you're on it. Okay, so this here says find your soul mat mate. So find your soul mate. And he's coming in with all of these. And so there's a lot of comments that said that the words, and I didn't think that the words necessarily all add up, but the more that I hear them, the more I kind of think that they do. So you're my only son, you're the only one in the world. Because if we look at this as Jin talking about it. The words could still represent on in a lot of this and almost everyone that we've done the like talking to yourself essentially like talking to your youth talking to the people around you and if we're talking about finding our soulmate right the soulmate could be a representation of ourselves as well like being that acceptance period Okay so that was the first thing that I noticed and then I bloom for you okay I have that right now I bloom for you I bloom for you but I'm still getting thirsty so we literally saw a physical representation of Jin, when he was in the dark, the flower bloomed on his chest, which is like kind of the acceptance of adulthood. But I don't think that he's ready to accept it, which is why we keep going back. I think like this is like like a denial thing where we keep going back in time or back in his head and he's reliving these moments, like almost like relitigating the past. 
and trying to almost like fight it. So like I think that these like I do think that the words here are very very purposeful. And then I think as you go down in like age with some of them, I think some of them are in more denial than others, right? Like they're in different timelines. So, like RM and V if they're on this end, that probably puts like JK and Jimin and maybe J Hope because of like some of the issues that they have on the other end and then Sugar somewhere in the middle because he's volatile right with the fire and i i think that that's that's what's happening here with with these pieces and then 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 okay so this happened in i don't know exactly where here hold on what do they spray paint in hold on hold on hold on hold on it's it sucks because like there's so oh, there's so much going on here, and I do this like in a live format. Okay, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Ugh. It was so quick when it first happened, but I wrote it down. Um, let me see if I can stop on it. There it is. Okay, it says youth on the wall, doesn't it? Wait, waste youth wasn't youth waste youth okay wait wasted youth something the something so and and this this leads me all this leads me all into this and then canvas high so they're they do this in prologue where they're paint they're spray painting right they spray paint over one of them in prologue but this i think is like so it's gin it's always Jin, and then Jin's getting painted. Jin's getting outlined here, and because he's the outsider, because he's he's already in his mind, right? He's the one who's who's literally knocking on the door of adulthood. And then, and then we of course had V. v so V's doing it here, and then V was also doing it there. Okay, I think that kind of gets us gets us there. Let's just, I, I know that we do a lot of breakdown and I don't I don't feel like I need to do separate video like you like these songs in and of themselves are absolutely amazing and I think that we all know that and like they're songs that I'm just listening to on my own but I don't think that for time's sake me doing a separate video to listen to the song and then to, to do that when I'm listening to the song a lot on my own after the videos really makes sense with how long these are I don't want to like try to milk it there's no point in that so okay <laughs> No matter how I far reach you, it's an empty dream. No matter what I run, I'm in the same place. Just burn me, we have fire again. And then we literally have, when we get here, literally we have a house of cards. That then V destroys, and then he breaks the fourth wall and looks into the camera. One of them, one of them was wearing a Nirvana, a Nirvana shirt in the last one. That's got to be purposeful. So, okay, if the water, if the water is like time or nothingness or the in-between, maybe being in between is kind of like the feeling of nirvana like you're not quite like you're not quite a child anymore but you're not quite adult so you just don't have to worry about it yet and maybe that's why he's wearing the shirt in that all right trains again Oh my god. 
There's so much in every one of these. Like, I can't even make, like, there's, I can't even make it a minute anymore or else we'll miss too much. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. So the trains are like a reoccurring theme. So I, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty settled on that the trains represent some kind of time. Um, so let's run, run, run. I can't stop running. This is in correspondence with Jin looking into the camera. Again, I think that he's running away while he's trying to accept moving into adulthood that he's also running away from it. And then we kind of have, again, like their carefree running, this lost boy kind of thing here in this where they're all together. And then... V is also struggling with the same thing at this point in time because V had we had the the father scene, the crumbling of the the letter or the the picture, and so he's kind of also in his own coming of age thing, but still, because I think that he's in the adult side of the spectrum for Jin. We have a lot of these tunnels again, one way traffic. There are a lot of times in tunnels, which is really like very, very, it's a very small, narrow path. You're going forward or you're going backwards. You can't really go out of the delineated line. And then um, we have like these looks to each other's here. This is their, this is their older selves. And then, so we talked about the mental health. So assuming that this is the literal aspect of it, maybe this is how some of them met. But both J-Hope and Jimin, who are presumably on the younger end or on at least the most they have the most like issues going on are both in here together so they could have met here but also like clearly they're they've been kind of like boxed together so we have some pairing off which would make sense with the soulmate thing and then when we have the pillow fight then it goes into back to all of them where it incorporates all of them again just like curse me this foolish destiny soulmates having to be together and then the don't tell me bye bye is like talking about youth and then we end with the butterfly which again is is also black in this one over like the white feathers and stuff because the white i think is representing kind of like the earlier end and the black is like the darker end or the adulthood aspect the the ending of the metamorphosis would be the butterfly which would then be adulthood i'm guessing Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, this is so freaking cool. Oh my god, okay. It, just, okay, let's just stop for a second to talk about like this is all acting at this point. Like, this is just, like, it's almost like a, like a TV series, right? And every single one of these is, like, an episode. And there's so many parts to tell and so much in each one of these. So, okay, so we have, we've seen a couple of pairings now. So now we have JK and we have Suga. And Suga right now is acting, like I said before, I think, like, very powerful. So my bare love and tough typhoon and wind so both of those things right would be very very uh like volatile and then jk in this case is kind of like he's the one trying to put the pieces back together you know um like he's the one like trying to like soothe it he's also the one obviously that gets like i don't think physic just physically beat up i think that he constantly feels like he has to be like he's always stuck under other people and is like picking them up um, and then we have them fighting here. So JK finally fights back in this, right? So he's finally like, okay, I'm not going to take it. 
and then so we go back to V who is like in his space where he's he's going through like his biggest metamorphosis portion right like he's at the tail end of it and then he throws this at the mirror which when these things happen this happens then the cards fall then Jin looks at the fourth wall because we just broke like the for, for those of you I, I i say this like and i assume that everybody knows so the fourth wall in um in films or in tv shows is something that came was came people came up with years and years ago but basically it's where the actor looks directly at the camera and kind of like not necessarily comes out of character for a second but breaks like that whole thing of you know you're watching a show so it's supposed to be like you're watching something but like he's acknowledging or she's acknowledging that like he or she knows that there's somebody watching that's what breaking the fourth wall is and so we see that a lot here what it like it always happens when it's like they feel like something's off like they're acknowledging something so we i think we broke this Boom. Then the cards fall. And then Jin's like, hold on, something's not right. And then we go back through the door where, like, again, it's going back and forth with time. But now we have... Now we have JK looking at the fourth wall. And now they're gone. And now the, the that mirror is gone, but there is a mirror that's not broken on the wall. And... It's like now he's starting to accept it, even though he was one of the younger ones. Like his fighting back moment was that step into adulthood. And now he's starting to accept it. Ugh. And then all the subways, like the one ways that they're on. Okay. Again, see, I this is, so please guide me, please stop me, please let me breathe. They all look at Jin in that one. Because Jin's the farthest along. I think that Jin's already gone through his journey and is in denial about his journey, which is why we keep seeing flashbacks. Each one of them, though, is coming along because each one of them is a part of him that he's trying to get along on the journey. And then this just, it just feels more lost. Like, this just feels very, very Lost Boy esque. Them looking up at the sky, like the, f the, the birds are flying, you know. Um, and like coming like out of like where they would normally be into more of their true selves, like all of this, but a lot of one ways, like the imagery is like a lot of just like one way imagery. Like they, there's not a lot of movement that can happen except for when they're like this and they're out in the open in the field. And then it feels more like the lost boys, because again, that feels more youthful. If that makes sense. Oh my God. <laughs> Like chasing the butterfly or wondering in dreams, I follow your traces. Because they're following that, or he's following them in there. And the butterfly is, again, a, a symbol of that dream thing. And, oh, I saw that people people were, like, talking about when I, when I talked about the Inception song. And they're like, no, that's, like, one of their songs. Like, no, they worked in. They 100% worked in that song into that. 100%. I went back and listened to it over and over and over again. And, like, literally, if you put it on top of it, it is that song. Like, it is the song from Inception. 100%. 100%. So, like, I do... Like, that's purposeful that they chose to do that. It's over it, but they did do that.
Okay. Oh, wow. This is such a cool scene. Okay, let's get back to where we start this. So, okay. Who's in the car? Is that... Is that V and Jimin? And then we have JK on top. Jin is, of course, driving. This is the same truck from before. And now they're all out. Okay. So and maybe I'm reading way, way too much of this. Okay. So all of the cars are bland colors. They're all black, silvers, and whites. As somebody that came from the car business, we actually used to call these like rental car co colors or executive colors because like it, it tends to be like more executives or like rental car, but they're safe colors. And so you tend to only like rental car companies a lot of times only like to buy black, white, silver, and gray because it's easier to sell them afterwards because um, more people are likely to buy them because more people choose safe colors than like really, really big colors. And then for like executives and stuff like that, like they want to be very, very, you know, a lot of times it's a lot of black cars or like silver cars. So all of the cars here are that. Also, many of these cars here are also like higher end vehicles. We have a Land Rover, I think a second Land Rover, we have a BMW. I'm not really certain what this is. But then they go and they are like pouring stuff all over these cars. At one point, V spray paints it. The same thing, by the way. Oh, oh, the same thing that he did to uh, that he did to Jin. He did to these cars. So, because these cars are like adult, like cool ca adult cars, right? Like this is them rebelling. This is the Lost Boys rebelling against these. Here's another BMW. Here's another Land Rover. Um, so like we have a couple, but like it's. It feels like very, very like rebelling against adults. And then they try to run away from it. But they literally stopped. He's stopping traffic again in a one way time alley. He's stopping traffic, stopping adulthood. And now they're all doing it. And now they're running away from it. But then, but then, like, first off, why didn't they just jump in the truck with him? So they start running away first. And then he comes and then he picks him up. And and now they're, what? They're also in an, an adult vehicle, I guess. He's leading them. Oh, this is the bathroom from the first one, right? Just winked at him. Okay. Whoa. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So this is reoccurring everywhere that they running besides when they're open in their youth in the lost boy thing th again they're like on these very linear paths they every single place it's either in a tunnel or in a subway station or on something like this where like this path like they can only go in one direction they're always confined into one space so jimin is coming back in now this is the room that this looks very, very similar to the tub in the room in the white that he drowned in. It might not be the exact same, but I think that's the, what we're supposed to get here because then they push his head underwater. So inhale, exhale, breathe, which when you're underwater, obviously that's impossible to do. Then they're throwing like a lot of the water around, but then they put his, they put him underwater. So right here, okay, curse me this foolish destiny. So... When he goes underwater, that's the destiny part. Like, that's the giving in. 
And then also V also gets pushed underwater at some point when we're seeing him go back and forth with this. But don't tell me bye-bye. Love is a lie, lie. Because it's like all of this is technically a lie. Because it's also happening in, in Jin's head. And then... In this scene, this, okay, this is like the exact same thing that happens right before he gets hit by the car. Except now we're not, he's not getting hit by the car. Jin's, Jin's the one driving. And he looks back at Jin, basically as like, and then winks at him, like basically like giving him like the okay, because he's also now broken his fourth wall. So he's basically like, okay, I get it. I know. And like, it's okay. Like either I can accept this or you can accept this. And then th presumably this, this is Jin's eyes closing, but it really is representing like the end of the, the end of the dream. And then at the end, at the end, once he opens his eyes back up, or once he closes them, we have V that's coming out presumably on the other side of this, drenched black and coming out of Nirvana. Oh my god, it's so cool, because V's taking the plunge into adulthood. Oh my god. I don't know, there's like two minutes left. I didn't really, well, it's not, I guarantee if it's anything like the other ones, it's not the end, we're gonna see other things here. Yeah, and that was through Jin's eyes. He has a sucker there. Oh, and then there, that was V. Because, because I think that that's like them. It's like some of them are closer to adulthood and they're breaking through to that in the acceptance phase. And that was V's, v, V doing that. The birds, this is the openness, this is the lost boy thing. <laughs> A lot of suckers, just kind of like, just a representation of youth in these. Okay, this is the scene from the last one. But Jin's not there. Okay, okay. So, are each one of them, each one of Jin's pieces beginning to accept, are beginning to accept the, the kind of, like, adulthood nature of it? Like, so that's the second time that a picture's been done. So, if this, if, if prologue, we had it with V... RM presumably is already like way way on the cusp. I don't think that we've made the full on, but he he is he is way on the cusp. V made his transition and he let go of it with the picture in the last one. Now we have the picture in this one that gets burned. Again, Jin's not in that, but he was in it before because Jin is Jin is a guide. In the truck, he was a guide. In all of this, he is like through the camera lens, he's the guide, and it's happening through him, which leads me even more to believe like. He's he it's like he's stuck between Wendy and Peter Pan. Right? Like Peter Pan was the denial of 
adulthood. Peter Pan like believed he was a he was a grown ass man, which really let's talk about how complicated and weird that book is at another time when you really think about it. But he was essentially like a grown ass man that was like you know whether he was robbed of a childhood or whatever it is, then like goes on this journey to like bring all of these people with him and like you know be a kid forever, right? And then Wendy is like the antithesis of that. Like Wendy is like a young teenager, younger girl, but the oldest in her group. And like has to be like kind of that motherly figure, including to all of the lost boys. Right. So like, she has to do that. And I feel like Jin here is playing both parts because he's fractured. So like in parts of these where he's like back in his like youth, he's like leading them in like youthful ways but then like also there's other times where he is then like the wendy figure and is then like helping them navigate from their childhood to adulthood at least that's what i'm taking for this but i think that in the end it's all him like we're seeing individual stories that have also happened and individual issues that have happened more in the literal sense but i think that all of these things are these are his memories and in his mind and his dream, perhaps, that he is the one that's actually leading himself through these, but he's leading the different portions of himself that he needs to come to terms with before he can make the final step, if that makes sense. There's a lot in this one. And I'm sure I'm going to go back and I'm probably, in, you know, what I'll do, which is what I've been doing, is I'll go back, I'll watch it a few more times, and then in the next video, I'll recap on on more that I think that I'm missing from this. Because, like, some of those things were so quick. And, like, it's so weird because, like, I get really, really hyper-focused. Like, I'm trying to read the words at the same time, but also, like, pay attention to, like, all the little things. Because, like, I notice in a lot of these, like, there's things on the wall and writing or there's things that they're wearing or, like, the hoods kept coming. Like, so I'm – it's, like, it's really, really hard to try to pay attention to that, which is why I pause so frequently because if you don't do that and you don't get to go back. And then a lot of times when I end up on those areas, like, I'll write little pieces down. But then, like, even the words fit on those stills of what's going on. So I don't know if all of them were actually meant for that. Like I, I personally, me personally, I believe that the words are far more tied into this than what a lot of people said in the comments they thought they were. That like the videos and, and, and the words were completely different. And I think that there is, I think that they can be taken on their own, obviously. Like these could be completely different songs all in their own right. But the way that they're putting them in the film, I think is personal purposeful because of some of the specific words that they use in there that you could have used other words words like bloom words like fire like typhoon and wind like those are action words that you don't necessarily need to use unless that they're purposeful and you're trying to convey some kind of larger emotional message oh man i it, the crazy thing is i literally have to like carve a lot of time out for each one of these because like I get so giddy about it and then I have to like before I go and record anything else kind of have to calm myself down so anyway guys let me know what your thoughts are again please 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 no spoilers but let me know what your thoughts are of this um please please support keep helping out uh, I love this community so much and uh, I love it more and more every single day Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Check out our music on Spotify, on Amazon, on iTunes. Um, support us on Patreon if you really, really want to support us. You also get some extra free content. Well, not free, but if, you, if you're going to do it anyway, if you want to support us anyway, then you're going to get extra content out of doing so. Um, and that stuff's all on Patreon as well. If nobody told you that they love you today, don't forget, I love you. You are appreciated. You are always welcome here in this channel, and you are enough. And last, but certainly not least, it was a great day to play. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. And it's time to change for the last.